Ever since I was young, I've been fascinated by human consciousness and how we can discover who we really are and also create reality from that inner state of being. So I've spent my life really pioneering and working with myself because as I open and change myself, I've noticed that the more that I change, the more that everything around me also changes because the resonances that radiate from each of us, we resonate and we vibrate at different frequencies and as we resonate, it creates change around us very, very effortlessly. And the more that we experience our connectedness to all, the more that we become aware of the fact that we are creating. So creation is a very natural process and we are all very, very powerful creators. And when you're in a perception of being separate from your true self, you're not aware of creating your reality. You're not aware of creating every day. Humanity and all of us individually have been living within a perception of being separate from the truth of who we are, separate from our infinite nature. And when we perceive ourselves as separate, we create from a reality of being separate. It's a set of beliefs that become so strong that they become an entire operating system, which means a way of thinking, feeling, being, acting, and perceiving, which we think is reality. So what we call reality seems fixed. It seems like this is reality and I know the truth of that, but it isn't. It's a particular reality that's born of our perceptions of separation from all that is, but it's not the reality or the truth. It's a particular perspective. At a certain stage of development, we believe that life is happening to us. It seems like that. That's the perception that we are the victims of life and that we need to do something to fix it out there or to save ourselves or to save each other. And that comes from a certain perspective that is within the old paradigm of separation. Because when you're truly connected to yourself, there isn't a perception that something out there is doing it to me. Instead, what happens is that you truly know that whatever you see outside of you is a reflection of some part of you. When you go deep enough into one's own darkness, there are impulses in there that want to destroy, for example, or get so angry that we would like to slap that person. I've heard really lovely people say, I just want to strangle that person. I just want to slap them. I just want to kick them in the butt. I'm going to make you pay for this. People say these things every day and they don't realize that there is that tendency for that kind of rage and violence within each of us. But when you see that it's there and can hold those parts in compassion, then they change, they relax. It's like, okay, so I have a person in there that wants to say, shut up, I don't like you and go away. I have a part that wants to reject and judge and push away. And we all have that and it's natural, but it needs to be seen. We have those energies within us to want to judge and criticize, to want to get rid of or push away, or to want to play victim, poor me, I'm being so hurt and nobody understands me and it's just terrible what I'm going through and if you only understood how hard it is for me, you would take pity on me and, or, well, I'm such a martyr, I just had to take care of this person and it, I just didn't have a choice about it, I just had to. And when we play those roles, we say, well, I'm stuck and this is just reality. I have to take care of this person or I, poor me, I, I, I need somebody to take care of me. And we think that that's reality, but it really isn't. It's just a perception inside of an old paradigm. So everybody living in the old paradigm really truly believes that we are victimized by our life, that life is happening to us and it's out there and we have no power and we need to try to take control and make our lives work because it's a mean and cruel world that isn't safe and we don't want our children going into this mean and cruel world and see, look at all the evidence out there, see that proves it's true. And in that kind of attitude, we don't understand 
that it's something in us that has created the world that way and creates our constant judgment of ourselves. For example, how many times in one day do we say things to ourselves that are really nasty? How many times? Oh, you suck. Oh, you should hurry up and do that. Oh, you're ugly. Oh, you're just too, too tall, too short, too fat, too skinny. Oh, you shouldn't do much better. You should be much richer. Then you'd be happy. You should have said this. Oh no, why did I say that? So all day long, we're beating ourselves up with a lot of judgment or, oh, those people, did you see what they wore? Did you see what they said? Did you hear them? Did you, right? And the energy of that is really yucky. It's damaging and it's painful. So we all have those parts in us, but as we can learn that they're there and they come from feeling separate from our inherent, our innate goodness, our innate beauty, our innate love, anything that's really inherent, when we separate from that, we get into a lot of pain and then we do a lot of judging, we do a lot of victimizing of ourselves and others, a lot of persecuting of ourselves and others. That's what we do and we think that it's out there happening to us. And we don't realize that there's something in us that is not connecting with the loving beings that we truly, truly are. Because underneath all of the junk is a whole state of love and a whole state of connectedness that would create an entirely different world if we were to start to feel it. And what happens for most people is they don't feel the depths of themselves. They don't feel who they really are in their state of lovingness, in their state of goodness. They just stay in this swirl in the mind all day with the judgments and the fighting and the anger and the fears and the hardships and all the stories and oh no, oh no, I'm so scared that life won't work and oh no, it's never gonna give me what I want and my needs are never gonna get met and what do I do? And Most people stay in so much storytelling and it's such a cycle of energy that they don't break free to feel, to ever really feel. Like, who am I really? Is this really who I am? No, it's a part of me. Okay, it's there, it's a part, but it's not the whole of who I am. Yes, and they're wrong. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> it looks that way. I get that. It certainly appears that way. But when you feel the truth of your resonances, let's just take love as an example or abundance. When you truly, truly feel the resonances, the vibrations and frequencies of deep love and abundance within you, those resonances radiate out and create for you beyond your comprehension of how this is happening, they create opportunities. Now, we can get in control and go earn a living and have a lot of money and do this and do that, but it's very costly in terms of we use so much energy that by the time you get the money that you think you want, you're so exhausted and dead <laughs> that you don't enjoy your life anyway, and you're then scared of losing it. And that way of being is so exhausting that people don't realize that we have within us right now infinite resource, meaning our energetic resonances are infinite and they elegantly and effortlessly create what it is that is truly our heart and soul's desires. They don't know that they can. They really believe in lack and that's what they create or it's for people who just feel completely disempowered for some reason. They're so powerless they can't create something that lets their life work. And we can look around and say, well, I don't like what is happening, or I don't like where I am, but then you can look at yourself and say, hmm, what am I actually doing that's creating this? Is there some place of limitation or lack in me that's creating this, or am I really really coming from my deepest resonances of love and beauty and peace and wisdom and abundance. Where am I coming from? It always comes back to that. So you can build a life from control. You can even accumulate a lot of money. But just because you have a lot of things accumulated, that doesn't mean you're abundant. 
being an abundant person is not the same as how much I have accumulated. You can also be very abundant and love playing with material things. You can have a lot of money if you want, but it's a choice. It's not, I have to have money and accumulate all this stuff to prove my value and to make me good and to make me feel better. And does it actually do it? No, it might give you a temporary high or a temporary fix like, oh good, I have some money. Phew, I have money in the bank. I can relax. And then the next time the bank account drains, then what happens? You're still in a cycle of fear, never feeling safe. But if you completely open into your inner resonances and let that create from abundance, from resource, from happiness, then you're not living in fear. You're not living in stories of, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose the love. I'm going to lose the money. I have to make more. I need more. I have to prove my worth. I have to be good enough. Those stories fall away. This is a big confusion for a lot of people. We need to distinguish between a fear-based story and the pure, authentic emotion of fear itself. We can tell a lot of fear-based stories. I'll never have enough. I'm not lovable. That's a fear-based story. Or the world is coming to an end, or things will never work, or it's hopeless, or I'm powerless. Separate from those stories, we have in us every single emotion that exists. We have fear, anger, joy, sadness, delight, wonder, magnificence. We have everything you can imagine within us. And when those energies are just there moving without a story attached, they are actually empowering. If we let ourselves just feel fear with no story attached, Every emotion that we feel, even fear, is an empowering emotion. But if we put a story on it, say, I'm not going to let myself feel fear because fear is a bad emotion, and we get more and more constricted, and then we start eating and drinking and smoking, and we start doing addictions, and we start trying to grab at things to make ourselves feel better because we're so tight inside, and we feel so sick because we're not letting our energy flow, and we're all constricted because we're not actually feeling our emotions, our true emotions, without stories. So if I feel fear, I'm willing to simply let myself relax and feel it. If I feel anger, I'm willing to relax and let it move through. Because in an open state, where we are an open system instead of a closed system, we can allow our feelings to move and they any authentic emotion will move through your body in about 20 seconds. It's no big deal. The things that stay and go repeat and repeat and repeat, and I'm always sad and I'm always miserable and I'm always, I'm always angry, I'm always angry, I'm always scared, I'm always scared. Those are stories and not authentic emotion. They come from the mind and they never stop. It's a closed loop. We're not actually feeling in our being. We're not allowing our energy to flow for real. Because when energy flows, no matter what feeling it is, it's empowering. Joy is empowering, fear is empowering, anger is empowering, and they all move at once when there's no story or interpretation attached. When it doesn't mean anything except, I'm willing to feel fear. I'm willing to feel joy. Open into authentically feeling. Feeling is a resonance or a vibration. You literally feel it everywhere in your body when you feel. Only the conditioning has made men shut down a little more that it's, you know, boys do not cry. They don't feel you have to go to war and kill each other. How can you, if you're feeling, could you walk up to a brother and kill that brother if you're feeling love for that person? No. So in order to be a man and go to war, you have to shut down those feelings hard. Then you can carry out the dirty deed. <laughs> then you can kill. But if you're feeling your fear, your real fear of going to war, you wouldn't be able to harm another being because they're part of you. Okay? They, you include them as part of you. We couldn't kill each other if we were really feeling. 
But since men have been traditionally the ones to go to war, men have had to really shut that down. And that's not men's fault, it's the conditioning. So it's just time to make a new choice and open up and <laughs> reclaim feeling because inherently men are just as sensitive as women, believe it or not. There really isn't a difference. I've never found it in all the thousands of men I've worked with and the thousands of women. There's such sensitivity in humans when we allow ourselves to start to reclaim, you know, our ability to feel our own energy, our own isness, our own consciousness, our own light. There's nothing, no part of us that's an enemy. Everything within us, whether you agree with it or not, whether you like it or not, whether it's useful or not. And the mind can be, it's a very useful tool if you need to do linear things. When you need to add and subtract and take measurements and do things that are linear functions, you need to have a well-functioning mind. It helps. <laughs> Otherwise you call someone else, can you measure this for me? But, but it helps to have a well-functioning mind. Um, but we don't need to listen to the stories that are in the mind, the interpretations. So for example, let's say the mailman comes to your door and hands you the letters. Here's your mail. You say thank you and the person goes away and you read your mail. Now imagine that the next time the mailman comes to the door, you grab the person, drag him into the house, make him sit down, make him open the mail, and make him answer the mail. Over time, this person would get very angry because you're misusing his function. His purpose is to hand you the mail, say goodbye, and go away. So if you try to use something like your mind for the wrong reasons, it gets all twisted up and th that part of you starts to get very upset and angry because you're placing a demand that it do something other than what it can do. It's our senses, our beingness, that discovers, explores, and discovers beyond the mind and beyond all of those stories. So when we open to connect with our beingness at a much deeper level, we start to discover and we start to feel something way beyond what our mind is capable of. And that's where life gets juicy and interesting and really wonderful, joyous and free because, and we create a new, in a much more optimal way, and it opens us up to limitless possibilities in that space because there is limitless potential which move into possibilities, which move into probabilities, which moves into actuality or form. And the mind doesn't do that. It's a different mechanism. It's much more important that you're having an experience because our mind can't understand at all who we really are, our real energy. However, you can experience it. Let's just breathe a little bit more and let go into trusting the state that's happening in you. Let's just let go into exploring it. Like, I'm going to trust and open into what's happening right now and I'm willing to let myself experience rather than think, just for a moment. And let me discover what happens as I experience. And that's where it gets really fun because I don't know. And that's the key. And it's the key to what's happening on the planet right now. Meaning what's happening is beyond our understanding. And that can be very threatening. That level of turmoil and uncertainty and chaos can be extraordinarily threatening to the parts of us that want to know and want to control it. It's threatening to the mind. However, some experience is starting to open and happen that's beyond what the mind can understand or create. Because the mind thinks in a linear fashion and everything I'm speaking about is nonlinear. It's all holographic, multidimensional. It's a different reality than linear reality. And that exists too. It's part of who we are. But it's not very interesting. After you've finished exploring it, it's not really interesting at all. And um, it's much more interesting to, to explore multidimensionality, which goes on forever, which is a process of enlightening, integrating, and further enlightening. You can certainly change the energy of the past, and you can change the way you feel about it. You don't change the facts. 
but it becomes meaningless in a certain way, kind of like a dream. Like when you wake up in the morning from a dream, sometimes you look at it, you dissect it, sometimes you give it meaning and some, you know, you look at the symbolism in it to learn something. And then when it's done, it's just done. And this life too, the facts of this life becomes just a dream where you're so present in the moment that it doesn't matter what the past is or what the future, how it's becoming. You just are so in the moment, so present that everything's happening all at once, the past and the present. And whoever you've been up until this moment starts to seem like a dream. It almost seems like a different life. There's an evolution of consciousness that's happened. So look at it, for example, like a child who's born and isn't aware of themselves as a separate being. When a child is young, they're merged with the mother completely, and they think they are that other person. There isn't a distinction. Then gradually, the child gets a sense of self, individuates, and goes away from the parent, and then maybe, in the best of circumstances, comes back to reconnect as a friend and companion rather than a parent and child. And it's the same with us in the evolution of human consciousness, we're still in a fairly young stage, but we start completely connected to all that exists. And this period of time is where the opportunity is here to reconnect, but not to lose the individuality. The more that you realize that you are connected to everything and can celebrate that connection, the more that you know your unique self as well. The more I'm me, the more I can discover my connection with all, and the more I discover my connection with all, the more I know myself. So it's not an either or, either I'm just connected and I lose me, or I'm just me and there's no connection. And in this period of time, in this particular paradigm, which has been approximately for 100,000 years, we have been in a very individuated state, which is I'm just me. This is my body, this is my personality, and there is no connection. And what's happening now is that we're moving from that state of separation where we just know ourselves as just me. I am just my personality, I'm just my body, to being able to sense and feel our connection with all, which then also gifts us with a much deeper sense of self, a much deeper knowing of who we really are in our own uniqueness and in our connectedness. We change and everything around us changes. And that's the opportunity right now. Now, obviously, all of humanity is not in that spot, but we're all in the process of changing towards that. And that's why right now the planet is full of chaos, ambiguity, turmoil, turbulence, the unknown, the uncertainty, because in order to truly change paradigms, the light needs to further integrate the dark, and the dark needs to further integrate the light. And in order for that to happen, the darkness that has been within humanity all over the planet is being exposed. And it's, it's not pretty. <laughs> it's very, a lot of people are frightened by it. A lot of people are fearful that terrible, terrible things will be happening. We are on track. There's nothing wrong happening no matter how it looks. We really, really are in the process of creating an entirely new future, an entirely new new reality. And again, what's important is it starts with us, it starts inside of us individually. And the numbers don't matter particularly. What matters is, even though gradually all of humanity will wake up, yes, at some point, and more and more people are now really getting interested in um, not just spirituality as we've known it, but in, in awakening and in change. There's a change happening, sweeping across the world, and based on a different perception of reality. So we're in the process right now of the collapsing or dying of an old paradigm, an old order, and at the same time, simultaneously, a birthing of a whole new order, a whole new paradigm, which changes the way that we think, it changes the way we feel, changes the way we perceive, it changes our entire perception of reality. And it will take, you know, I don't know how long exactly, it could take 50 years, it could take, I don't know how long for the entire planet and all of humanity to move into that new state, but individually we can do that right now. 
And as we can look at the darkness that's happening on the planet as part of us as well, that it's inside of that old operating system, which is based on fighting, it's based on righteousness, based on winning and losing. And if I win, then you lose. I need to be right and I need to get rid of you and I need to build walls and I need to defend and I need to protect myself. And all of those perceptions and ways of being are part of an old way of perceiving. And as that's collapsing and falling apart, a new paradigm of dominion where each of us lives in a very, very different place within ourselves, a new paradigm is being born at the same time. So for that to happen, the depths of the darkness of the old need to be exposed. Because once you can see something, you can say, oh, that's the energy from which I've been creating my reality. Oh, I see it. And once you can see it in yourself, as well as in the world, then you can say, you know, that really doesn't work to run around killing each other in the name of God, in the name of righteousness. That violence really doesn't work. It's not a great way to go. I can forgive myself for it. I can be accepting of the fact that that's the best we've known up until now. However, I don't, I don't condone it, but I can bring enough acceptance to the goodness of humanity underneath that that we can choose again and make some great changes. So we don't have to still live in something once you can see what it is and see that this is not working, it doesn't feel good at all to live from that. But that's a very individual thing. We can't go running around out there just changing humanity. I'm going to go change the world. It has to be really that we fundamentally change ourselves. Otherwise, we're pointing to somebody else saying, well, they're doing it. It's those people over there who are creating the wars and the darkness, but I, I'm a peaceful person. But this energy of it's them is a war. It's a fight against. And it doesn't mean we have to like what we see. We don't have to agree with it. But we can understand that people who are in, at war and in violence are really foundationally and inherently good people, but they're living from such profound pain of separation from their real selves and from their authentic emotions that they act out in violence. They act out because they're not living from their authenticity. And we can hold that with compassion towards people learning how to live from their authenticity. Every different vibration of consciousness exists. And so on the planet, there are so many different levels of consciousness that are coexisting. And we get to choose with ourselves, where am I? What do I feel? What am I willing to open into? So it comes back to us individually all the time, starting right here, right now. <laughs>